Hello YouTube, Alpha White Wolf bringing you the latest death battle reaction, All Might vs. Might Guy. <sighs> the end of 2019 for Rooster Teeth, the end of this season, and hopefully it's going to be an interesting video to watch. Now right off the bat, I'm familiar with both these characters. I'm a little more familiar with All Might right now, even though I've known about Might Guy longer. I'm not as familiar with what Mike Guy does in the Shippuden and the end of the main Naruto uh, series, so I'm a little unsure about all what all that he can do. I'm a little more familiar with All Might because I've been watching My Hero Academia from time to time. I've seen a good portion of it. <sighs> but yeah. Whew. Excuse me. So, right off the bat, I'm thinking it's going to be a bit of a strength versus speed situation, where All Might has strength, but Might Guy has speed, and it really comes down to which attribute is going to be more useful against the other. Uh, beyond that, yeah, any uh, updates that I'm going to talk about are going to be at the end. So let's go ahead and uh, get right into it. All right, three, two, one, and play. That sounded a little different. Let's be real. Superheroes with super strength are like rabbits. They're everywhere. But when oh, a yeah. hero uses that strength to inspire others, they truly stand out from the crowd. Like All Might, the symbol of peace from My Hero Academia. And Might Guy, master of ninja combat and bushy brows from Naruto. He's whiz and I'm boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a, a death, death battle. battle. Looks like it's going to be a pretty decent 3D fight. Powers are common, so-called quirks, which can be trained at distinguished academies in hopes of becoming a superhero. I know what you're thinking. If everyone's got a power, then no one is super, right? Except most quirks are really lame, like a balloon face or stretchy eyeballs. You. Even then, there are some unlucky few who don't have any quirk at all. You may already know one of these quirkless, Izuku Midoriya. But before him, there came another. One who would change the world. His name is Toshinori Yagi. Toshinori wasn't a pushover, though. Even without a superpower, he wanted to become the symbol of peace. And thanks to pro hero Nana Shimura, he found a way. Shimura's quirk had the unique ability to be directly passed on to a new user. And she saw something special in Toshinori. And so, he became the next bearer of One for All. An ultra-powerful quirk that let him become that symbol of peace with a never-ending smile on his face. All Might! I am here! Now a truly remarkable hero, All Might quickly rose through the local rankings. But fame wasn't the reward he sought. He legitimately just wanted to help people. Yeah, just look at that big old grin. That's not just for show. He keeps his smile up to make sure the people around him feel safe. And with his powers, why wouldn't they? All Might can punch with enough force to change the weather, even creating a massive storm once. It's raining. Holy crap. He changed the weather. He can jump so high, people mistake him for flying. You might say they're taking a flying leap in logic. But along with super strength, one for all includes powers like improved durability, stamina, and speed. All Might has no problem taking huge hits and fighting villainy in the blink of an eye. And thanks to his training at UA High School, All Might molded his quirk into an incredible fighting style. With moves named after the United States? I thought this dude was Japanese. Well, it's likely a nod to how the U.S. essentially created the modern superhero, like Superman. America's got a sort of superhero monopoly going on. To say the least. Like that, I'd name my moves after food. California roll. Not surprising. But it works. Going for two. Lobster roll. Why look? Ah! <laughs> anyway, there's a ton of different. 
smashes in All Might's arsenal, covering all sorts of states and cities, from Nebraska to Detroit to the Carolinas. And most of their names actually do describe their results to a certain extent. For example, his Texas and Oklahoma smashes both create variations of tornadoes. And those two states are smack dab in the crossfire of real-life Tornado Alley. Coincidence? Probably not. Of course, many of his attacks create targeted gusts of wind, but every smash does have its own unique form of delivery, such as how the Missouri smash is a karate chop, and the New Hampshire smash is a reverse attack meant to send All Might rocketing through the air. But he's got one mega-sized move that goes beyond all that, or as he calls it, Plus Ultra. So friggin' hardcore, huh? Yeah. States of Smash. Cause I'm proud to be an American. So at least I know how free I God, I love that move. But he's Japanese. America. Yeah. United States of motherfucking Smash Jam. To determine the power of this epic blow, let's find the volume of the resulting whirlwind by comparing its size to the nearby buildings. Applying the standard height of 3 meters per floor, the whirlwind appears to be at least 2,200 meters tall, giving it a volume of over 10 billion cubic meters. To create a tornado that large, All Might's strike must have equaled a force of over 11,000 tons of TNT. That's insane! He's got the power of an atomic bomb in his bare fist! He's also fast enough to run down this stairway in less than half a second. A feat which, given the distance measured, means he can move 29 times faster than sound. <laughs> He's in the same league as the supervillain Gigantomachia, who blew up a mountain. And he punched this Nomu guy so hard, he pulled a team rocket. Looks like Nomu's blasting up again! <laughs> With so much power, All Might remained the number one hero for years. Unfortunately, success doesn't last forever. Yeah, he got into a fight that was a bit bigger than even he could handle, and got injured pretty bad. So bad, in fact, it became difficult for him to use his powers, and drastically limited his full strength. But hey, don't worry, for death battle, we look at each character's peak performance across their whole life. Right, when fighting Nomu, All Might claimed that what he pulled off in 300 punches, he could have previously done with just five. Back in my heyday, five hits would have been enough to knock that guy out. But today, it took more than 300 mighty blows. Taken literally, this means All Might at his best was 60 times more powerful. But even as a crippled old man, he held on to the number one spot for a long time. Not because he was taking out more bad guys than the competition, but because he was just so goddamn heroic. At least until he could find a new successor with a smile on his face. A shining example of what it means to be a true hero, just like himself. This episode was so cool. Because I am here. One of the most epic fights in the series. The village hidden in the leaves, ninja trained to use the mysterious arts of ninjutsu and genjutsu. It's basically ninja magic. Everything from shooting fireballs to messing with your brain. But some ninja just aren't suited to these difficult techniques. During young Rock Lee's time at the academy, he feared his lacking in these arts meant he would never accomplish his dream of becoming a ninja. And then he met the one, the only, the bushy, Might Guy! Hey, what's shaking? How you doing, everybody? Life treating you good? Guy is one of the most respected and powerful ninja among the hidden leaf. I can't take, I can't take those lines seriously. himself to this form over all else, Guy soon became a master in the taijutsu style strong fist. Which translates to punching people really, really hard. It's a fighting style that is literally all about breaking bones. Yeah, I'll take that over ninja magic, thank you. That's not to say Guy couldn't perform uh, ninja magic. He's just not very skilled in it at all. Yeah, like a bunch of ninja can summon cool shit like tracking hounds or giant toads. Guy can summon a turtle. That, that's about it. But mastering the strong fist style is a testament to Guy's ability. Only the toughest people in the world can use it at all. Otherwise, it's uh, super dangerous. That's the
a big thing with Guy's style. Because he's got to make up for not having ninja magic, everything he does comes with a big risk, especially his ultimate technique. Right. Guy's father, Might Guy, was instrumental in helping him achieve the goal of becoming a, quote, splendid ninja. But he also taught him a skill which would prove to be both of their undoing, the Eight Gates. Wait, 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 wait. Someone named their kid Might Die? What, are you just hedging your bets for the future? I mean, Die is dead. Well, then I guess they call it. The Eight Gates refer to the pathways within the So it was three generations of that jumpsuit. ...the life energy ninja used for their techniques. And, you know, to live. To simplify, by opening each gate, Guy essentially removes inhibitors on his body, greatly increasing his power, speed, and capabilities. The first few gates are kinda safe, unlocking 100% of the body's ability. The second one even heals you a bit, but once you get past number four, things start getting real messy. At this point, Guy suffers horrible pain and severe muscle tearing. While the power increase is certainly worth the risk in a difficult fight, it's likely to put the- Did his foot just catch fire? After opening the sixth gate, he can move so fast his punches ignite the air around him. Thought so. He can shoot fireballs from his fists. That would be the morning peacock technique. To ignite the hydrogen in the air, Guy must be swinging at speeds more than 40,000 kilometers per hour. That's over five times faster than the X-15 rocket jet, the fastest airplane in the modern world. And once he opens the seventh gate, he can perform Daytime Tiger, where he throws a giant tiger's face at you. Hell yeah, this beautiful beast is strong enough to blow up an island. Awesome. While opening the seventh gate would prove fatal for most ninja, Guy is strong enough and skilled enough to wield it without such concern. However, when it comes to the final gate, there is no going back. With the eighth gate of death, Guy's power explodes. His blood boils, evaporating from his body. Yeah, if you thought that was some Super Saiyan energy aura around him there, think again. It's his blood burning through his skin. Hardcore. Gross. What hardcore? In this mode, Guy can perform the speedy evening elephant technique. But his most impressive ability is, without a doubt, Night Guy. Okay, Might Guy, Might Die, and Night Guy? Who's coming up with this shit? This attack was powerful enough to decimate Madara, one of the deadliest villains in the Naruto universe. Madara could take on Naruto, who had enough chakra to blow a hole through the hmm. moon. Sure, Night Guy's still not as powerful as Naruto once the kid goes all gold and glowy, but it's definitely above Jiraiya's big ball Rasengan carving up a mountain, or Obito raising up a giant tree like a crazy reverse lumberjack. Despite all this risk, Guy proved himself an equal to some of the greatest ninja of the Hidden Leaf, including his longtime rival Kakashi, who was fast enough to catch lightning from a distance. Measuring the space Kakashi had to cover here and the speed of lightning itself, he must have moved over 700,000 meters per second, more than 2,000 times faster than sound. But in the end, even though he knew the Eighth Gate meant the ultimate sacrifice, he did it anyway like a boss to protect his friends. He did get lucky though, cause Ninja Jesus showed up to keep him alive. Good timing. No wonder he's always got a smile on his face. But handicapped from then on, Guy's days of combat were finally over. At least for the time being. <laughs> Still, even if this was to be his- Leave it to Mike Guy to fight while in a wheelchair. His successor. A shining example of what it means to be a splendid ninja. The Sunset Genjutsu. There were such goofy moments at times. Alright, the combatants are set, and we've run the data through all possibilities. But first, you can get a superhero for yourself to protect your computer and online data, and it's called ExpressVPN. Add. So, right off the bat, uh, I couldn't make a decision initially because I looked at it as a All Might Strength versus Might Guy Speed. But right now, it's looking like All Might doesn't have much of an advantage here. Guy seems to be able to match All Might's strength, exceed All Might's speed, and definitely be more skilled as a fighter. I think All Might might have been trained with some decent hand-to-hand -hand training, but my, my guy is trained in and mastered uh, Taijutsu, ninja martial arts. I don't think it's going to be much of a... I don't think it's going to be something that All Might can really overcome easily. 
So Mike Guy gets my vote. But right now, it's, it's time for a death battle. battle. Very clean animation. Very clean. They are both such dorks. Such dorks. All my <laughs> All Might heard them was just like, yes. It's almost as cool as Meliodas and Bond from Seven Deadly Sins. I would love to see these two basically just go into a workout. They would create this positive, vicious cycle, I swear. Yeah, I definitely see uh, Guy's speed and skill advantage. As long as he can deal more damage than All Might can. Yeah, as long as Guy can hit more often, he can deal more damage. If All Might can't even touch Guy, it's not going to do much good. What I'm thinking, though, is that some of Guy's ability... <laughs> some of Guy's abilities... All Might's probably seen them in different opponents. He's pulling that out a little earlier than I think he should. Does not bode well. F oh, wait. Oh, he's still he's still fighting. I thought All Might just won this. Yeah, All Might pulling out the United States of Smash that quickly does not bode well for him. Okay, there we go. Let's do it. Again. Did they literally just pull a vampires versus zombies from Deadliest Warrior? KO. Looks like All Might might not be all right. Well, All Might was an incredibly powerful and inspiring hero, but then again, the same could be said for God. All Might was super strong with plenty of good training. Without his gates, Guy wouldn't have stood. 
stood a chance. Right. Keep in mind that each of All Might's feats we covered were performed while he was in an injured state. So for this comparison, we multiplied each result by 60 as per All Might's own estimation of his power. For example, remember how he was similar to Gigantomachia who busted a hole through a freaking mountain? By scaling the mountain to the pine trees beneath it, it's easy to deduce the blast necessary for this would be about 2.5 gigatons of TNT. With the multiplier, that would be 150 gigatons in All Might's prime. That's 3,000 times stronger than the biggest nuke that's ever been set off. But here's the thing. Even with the multiplier, we know Guy was faster. And while they've both learned to fight a wide variety of opponents, Guy was trained all his life and boasted a more versatile set of abilities and techniques. So with that much speed and skill, Guy already had a pretty good advantage. So long as he could hit All Might harder than All Might could hit him. So to answer that, let's check their strongest attacks. All Might's greatest known feat would be the moment his smash created a massive storm, one that extended beyond the horizon. By taking the average mass of a thunderstorm, which is huge, and the 10 seconds it took for All Might Smash to create it, this comes out to a little over 24 gigatons of TNT. In his prime, this punch would equal over 1,440 gigatons. 28,000 times stronger than the biggest nuke from just one punch! Holy hell! Unfortunately, it's impossible to lock down a specific number in this way for Guy's strongest attack, Night Guy. However, we can scale him to similar characters we know to be at lesser levels. In this case, base form Naruto. God damn, we can never get away from this little twerp, can we? Well, Night Guy did serious no. damage to Madara, whom Naruto's normal abilities stood no chance against. Obviously, Naruto gains a lot more power when he accesses Sage Mode, Karama's Chakra, Six Paths powers, etc. But Night Guy is certainly more powerful than Naruto's base form at the end of the series. You know that hole in the moon we mentioned? That was made by pulling all of Naruto's base chakra out of his body and blowing it up. And I mean all of it. Most of his chakra has been siphoned off. We've actually covered this before, and that blast was 480 petatons of TNT. What's a petaton, you ask? Well, it's a whole lot bigger than a gigaton, that's for sure. Simply put, the gap in power put Guy several leagues above All Might. Also, Guy's superior speed ensured All Might couldn't avoid such a blow when it really mattered. Like, you know, in, in a fight to the death. And yeah, Guy using the 8th gate means he'll die later, but he still won the battle before that would happen. And that's still a victory. All Might was remarkably powerful and certainly a challenge for Guy. But with his gates open, Guy had the speed, versatility, and power to take him out for good. It was a mighty tough battle for all, but All Might wasn't a match for one powerful guy. The winner is Might Guy. What was that, like five puns in a single sentence? Hey, thanks for joining us for another season of Death Battle. Don't go away, we're about to reveal when the next season starts. If you want the battle track from this episode, you can get it in the link below, or you can check out more videos from over there. Okay, let's move this over here. I'm just gonna leave it alone. OBS is giving me some fits lately. I'm just gonna leave it as is. So, this was a lot of fun actually. In terms of, you know, uh, martial arts based uh, versus uh, death battles, Ryu versus Jin or Balrog versus TJ combo were definitely prettier and cooler looking, but this was a lot of fun. This was a lot of fun to watch. Now, I know, I don't think anyone's actually pointed it out, but, and if they have pointed it out, they usually point it out in a positive way, that I don't talk very much during these battles. And as a result of that, I actually hear what gets said. It infuriates me so much when I watch other reaction videos and blah 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 and they miss something important, they miss some key detail and then within the next 10-15 minutes they're confused as this detail that I missed because I was flapping my gums I didn't hear this but instead of learning from this and shutting my mouth, opening my ears and taking in the information, I'm just going to repeat the same thing the next time I do a reaction video and miss details there too. And it's something that I've seen in 
death battle reactions, epic rap battle of history reactions. Frankly, the most annoying ones of those for me are the ones where the reactor has to pause it every 10 seconds to laugh, to make a to make a point, to make some kind of interjection every 10 seconds. But that's my little that's my little personal rant. So, if you like the video, indicate so down below. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button so you can stay up to date with our uploads and our content. Uh, I got a couple games uh, kind of set up and ready to start being uploaded. But right now I'm kind of working on um, one particular series. Uh, Reaper is working on getting uh, Bloodborne kind of situated. Me and him are still ironing out the details for that so that he can do streams or uploads where he basically summons my character to help him out during the boss fights. Which if you've played Bloodborne you know full well those boss fights are a bitch. So yeah, he's working on Bloodborne. I was going to I was going to do that, but my PS4 crapped out at the perfect time for him to do it. Fortunately, though, my PS4 is now working again, which also means that in the near future, I can start uh, doing the Doom streams again. So stay tuned uh, this Saturday or Sunday. I'm going to try and schedule an event uh, where I do a YouTube Doom stream or a Twitch stream. I'm kind of undecided so far. Uh, but this really depends on whether or not the uh, schedule permits and if the internet connectivity is workable because the internet I currently have sucks. What else, what else, what else? I think that about covers it. Yeah, this has been Alpha White Wolf. I'm signing off. You keep howling, Wolf Pack. And as for the next game I'm about to start uploading, well...